Are you interested in learning how to take great photos with any camera? Today is your chance. Chris is well equipped to handle this subject since he has been taking photos as a serious hobby since he was 14. He has also had photos published in Nature Friend and taught several photography classes. Chris enjoys capturing the beauty of nature and cares about taking beautiful and <coughs> high quality photos. This presentation is going to be done in a workshop style, so audience participation is welcomed. Please welcome Chris Miller. From the flip phones of the early 90s to today's professional mirrorless camera systems, picture taking has become a normal part of our lives. Of the 200 plus social media sites, Facebook alone has nearly 210,000 photos uploaded to it every minute. Sadly, most of these photos have no lasting value. Technology has enabled us to have powerful cameras in even our cell phones. So why then are not more great photos being taken? Today we'll offer three elements that are important to a great photo so you can be proud of the photos you take with even your cell phone. First, let's see how well you can recognize a good photo by taking a survey. You will have five seconds to make your choice and I will write the results on the board. Which photo has the best subject? Who's voting for photo one? And photo two? Thank you. We will come back to that. <clears throat> Every photo requires a clear subject. Ansel Adams said, there's nothing worse than a sharp photo of a fuzzy concept. <laughs> it must be clear and simple, not distracting. I here, have here an example of a photo that demonstrates a clear and simple subject. We have a leaf. That's probably what your eye went to first. However, there's a lot more in this photo. We have boss, we have a rotting log, and some other leaves in the background. But that was all part of the story that the photo is telling. Let's go back to the, to the survey we took. Picture number two, you will notice the back of a lady on the right and a chair on the left. Picture one has this cropped out. We no longer have those distractions. Now Myron is clearly the subject of our photo. We can see he's huddled in a blanket and reading a songbook. Now, a great photo has a subject that's clear and simple, but if it's not composed properly, it loses a lot of its appeal. We'll now take a survey on um, photo composition. Which of these two photos would you say is composed the best? Those voting for number three? Okay. And four? Thank you. We will come back to this. A great photo is composed in is a critical part of a photo's appeal. This requires lots of planning, careful planning. For example, you should ask yourself, what is happening here? What is, what is going on? What are people doing with the stimuli that they're facing? What is the mood? Is it happy? Is it sad? And where do I need to be to capture this emotion or whatever I'm trying to say in this picture? Is there a better place to be? An unusual angle that most people don't think about some new way of seeing things 
that will uh, spark people's interest. It also has leading lines, and by this I mean lines that go through the photo that do not distract, but rather highlight the subject. Also, you may have heard of the rule of thirds. This is very, a very uh, common one. Uh, things like decor and committees. Having an odd number actually gives beauty to things. Here, I have a photo that demonstrates some of the thirds. We think of this as dividing it both horizontally and vertically. Horizontally, our first bottom third is right along about where his finger is pointing. The top third is about where his nose and chin are. Vertically, we have right up through here into the um, side of the cockpit, and of course up through there with Mr. Solstice's body. Now you'll notice that the lines of the map lead right up to his face. Also his arm shoots us down to the map. His eye brings us to the map. Everything is kind of helping to create a concise uh, subject that tells a story. It gives, gives us our eye something to feast on. A clear subject and a photo's composition lead us to the story of a photo. Combined, these give us the idea of what is going on. Let's see how well you had to... I'm sorry, we need to go back to our results. I forgot about that. Now if we look at these in thirds, uh, picture four is, is a better example of good composition. We have a line running down through here with the pond in the bottom third. The middle third, we have the farm, and the top third is sky with the line of clouds there. This one over here does not have much foreground, has lots of clouds, but there's nothing really for our eyes to look at. If you notice, there's some distractions there, and um, the, the appeal isn't nearly as good. Let's talk about story. Here again, you have five seconds to make your choice. Who's voting for number five? And number six. Great, you must be learning. <laughs> <laughs> A story connects us with what others have experienced with our own experience. You've heard the term, a picture is worth a thousand words. I think it's worth much more than that. Here I have a photo of Myron. When you see this photo, your mind goes to many places and things where you probably can uh, relate with. You see he's got a happy expression on his face. He's looking at his songbook. But he's also bundled up, which means that it's cold. But he has a nice warm light source. So, as you think about a photo like this, you notice the emotion and thoughts and feelings that you, you feel, and it gives you connection. Ansel Adams said, a great photograph is one that fully expresses what one feels in the deepest sense about what is being photographed. Let's go back to our survey. Probably the reason most of you chose picture number five was because of where Mr. Stewart's hand is. What you may not have noticed was the student behind him looks slightly confused. Obviously, Mr. Stewart is solving a problem, and everyone is listening. He's in charge. His face shows uh, calmness and resolve. Down here, who's in charge? We don't know. Somebody off the screen is distracting their, their attention. So let's go over what we've remembered. The first thing you find in a photo is subject. subject. Second, composition. composition, and third, story. story. Wonderful. In this brief workshop, you've learned how to analyze, I'm sorry, you've learned how important subject, composition, and story are to a good photo. Let's see how well we can do. Let's analyze this photo. What are we looking for first? Subject. subject. What is the subject? Mr. Stahlsfus. Mr. Stahlsfus. What's the next thing we look for? Composition. composition. And notice the lines. 
Pilot, first, the first thing you saw was his eyes. Where are they looking? In the engine compartment. You've got his arms going into the engine compartment. You also have the hatch of the en engine compartment focusing your attention there. Now let's think about thirds. We've got his body on the left, the left sat third, and the airplane on the, the right two thirds. The top, we've got the airplane wings dividing the, the top third from the bottom third. Now, what's the third thing? Story. story. This, this photo really does a good job of telling a story. Normally when you see a guy with his hands in an engine compartment, it's not good. <laughs> but he's got a happy expression. This tells us that he's excited about what he's doing, at least. Probably going out on a nice little flight just doing some checkups to make sure he won't get stranded in the air. <laughs> Photography is an art. Skillful composition is an essential part of art, but, sk but skillful composition requires lots of practice. You now have the ability to analyze a picture for its ability to, to please. By thinking carefully about the subject of your photo, composing it well, it will help you to deliver the story behind the photo and give you many more stories that tell beautiful, many more photos that tell beautiful stories.